I'm Amanda Kellett, and I come here from Peter Katz and Leaders Architects, and I'm here to present today for multi-residential uh, boutique development in Hampton. There's 22 apartments over three levels, and two levels of basement car parking. Those are the numbers, you can get that out of the way. But uh, So this is one of our smaller apartment buildings that we've done, and I was fortunate to be involved from all stages of the project, so fabulous to be presenting. It's based in Hampton, which is a garden estate suburb in the Bayside, Melbourne. So we can see here that the red dot is where our site is, and a very close stone throw to the, the beach there. And just north of this page is in walkable di distance to the train station and the shops there. Our site is one where we've joined two sites together. And our challenge here is that this is um, predominantly an area where there are large garden estate houses. Many of them have a heritage value and quite diverse from each other. But uh, we are, in fact, injecting a larger scale of development into that garden estate. So it's something that we needed to be sensitive about. So some of these houses, we really wanted to take a close look at what they were and what was special to them so that we could respond to them in a diverse way, but in a way that respected them. So we have every different era just about represented in these houses. We've got a little bit of Victorian, Federation, Edwardian, and all very individual. You can see here a Californian bungalow with a little bit of Spanish mission in front. So we really wanted to assess what is special about these houses. And what we had assessed really is that it is that craftsmanship that brings an identity to the homes and some delight, and that interplay between detail and mass in the garden frontage and the layering of those frontages as well. So that's what gives those buildings their spirit. We need to give our buildings spirit as well, is what we were thinking at those early stages. So we started to look at what we would do on our frontage to, to create that layering and that craftsmanship to bring identity to our building. Now I should explain that Hampton, while it has got all these different styles, it does it is less formal than its neighbour Brighton, where it's all very rigid and and, some, and often symmetrical. It is more a composition of balanced asymmetry that we're working to achieve to, to get that spirit working. So some of these ideas came, came through and we were looking at where we would put detail, where we would overlap that, and then how those two would interplay. So this is one really early sketch, and it actually is very similar to the building, how the building ended up, and that we've got these transparent elements at the front here that are part of the garden of prime importance, and then they become part of the building as well. They hide things like the garage, which is you know, something that's not seen on that street, so we want to make that subtly disappear. And then it brings it forward some elements. And then the strength of an element, a permanent material, that more enduring quality, sitting in behind it. So it is a large building, and it takes its, it takes its presence on the street. It doesn't hide away from it. But we're looking at offering something that has got more complexity and softness to it in that frontage. See how the massing then moves forward and moves backwards. And we've just played with those shapes to, to make that more organic and to show the interplay between the solid element and the more lighter element. It's important though not to consider just the front facade but the sides of the facades as well because they face out and they're seen by the neighbours, they're seen by the people who live in it. So this is a balance between uh, detail and complexity and simplicity. And what the simplicity brings is a way to understand that building really easily and to give it a cohesive nature. We talked a lot about in those early stages complexity being something that can be enjoyed at a level, but if it's too much, it becomes difficult to understand. So these solid two-storey elements are very well expressed as the faces that give that cohesive bind to it, still with those lighter elements in between. The floor plan we can start to see has got those frontages and you can see how these more private areas sit behind the screen and then the apartment behind these. So it's this layering of the private to public realm. The garden estate where all of the houses have side gardens come around the, the side and the back, is allowed to happen with all these garden courtyards punctuated by larger trees. 
and making the most of the entranceway, which is narrow, but is shaped to draw you into it. And then as you come through that area, that compression then expands again to, to offer you a, a presence and a, an arrival point. Most of our uh, target audience were downsizers. They lived in Hampton all their life. They are selling their larger homes and want to move into something with a little more security. Uh, the sense of it being a house still in the garden, but perhaps without the maintenance or the size of it. Uh, so the, we really looked at the apartments. They're quite large in size, the smallest is 90 square metres. But we still worked hard to make sure that they had a simplicity, but a zoning to them from communal space to private space, so that that size would translate into a sense of real openness. That connection with the garden, once again, was key to that. So you can see here the materials come about here as well, but also that connection with the garden, that you're living in a garden state still. Uh, the material's soft and muted to give you a sense of it being a relaxing environment um, and natural. This is the penthouse area. As we come up, the building of the penthouse sits on a platform and it's got terraces all sides. So once again, we add those permanent fixtures of having garden in there, permanent planter boxes. But the view out across the rooftops and across to Melbourne on that north side as well, and wrapping all sides so we can really get that light in to enhance the textures. And then with the kitchens, we've taken a cue from the outside of the building, that balance between solid, robust and anchored elements and natural materials, and lighter and more intricate uh, elements that put a key focus in those activity areas there. Our view on this that we shouldn't give them a white box. We should give them something that has the beginnings of a character they could then put their furnishings into. So these are the final images of how it turned out. And I've got a number of photos of this. I saw it through construction. And of course, uh, I think that's a really important phase. We do all these drawings, but the delivery of this really is key in construction. We, we uh, have to go through the D&C construction, design and construct. These are often some relationships that are tenuous. And uh, what I wanted to say about this one is that um, this just reminds me of the day that uh, I stood here with the builder and looked up at this, this one and there had been a bit of a tussle about the finish on the, the uh, parapet up here and that sculptural element where I'd rejected the shop rooms a number of times and I think they were pretty sick of me. Um, but I had to go back to them and say, look, well, it really is such an important element. It has to have this fine edge to it. And then I rejected the sample on the thing a few times to say, look, it really has to have that texture. And it's not looking right. And so he was getting frustrated, but I said to him, look, thank you, because you responded to us, and it's a really good outcome. And there was this little moment where he said, yeah, we're pretty proud of it too. And I think that that is just about as key as doing any drawings, when we have to go through that tussle. And it's also what made it really worthwhile for me, as an architect, um, to be part of that construction process. I think it's just as important as those first early concepts and delivering a building like this. And so what we end up with, I feel, is, uh, and it's lovely to come back and get over all those hustles, to see that um, I think we ended up with something that's got that presence to the street, but a softness and something that the residents, the client, and the builder are all proud to have produced alongside us. So, um, so that's really, I'm just saying.